All right, well, welcome everybody. My name is Mary Wolf, and I'm an assistant professor of art education here at Buffalo State. I am joined on Zoom by my dear colleague, PDS partner and friend, Michelle Augusto, who is the director of arts for Buffalo Public Schools. And in the room with us, we also have two students who are to share a little bit, and we have and Abigail Sibiri. So uh, we're just here to talk about our PDS um, and how it had to change during our uh, pandemic. And we just wanna share what we went through, what the outcomes were, um, and hopefully it'll be something that you can take with you into your classrooms. So our history, um, everybody understands what professional development schools are, um, but they're a little bit different for art education. So typically a professor might take a class into an elementary class or school and put them in first grade, second grade, third grade and around the school. Um, but unfortunately we can't do that in art education because we are K-12 and there's usually only one art teacher in an elementary school, maybe two or three in a high school, three and four, you're lucky if you have that in high school. So we developed what we're calling professional development districts. So our very first professional development district was created when I started here in 2019 with the Buffalo Public Schools and Del Augusto. So um, to recruit her teachers, um, and we have since added Williamsville and Kenton as professional development districts, but to recruit teachers, we talk about the gives and gains of our community of practice. We feel that everybody's on the same level and we're all helping each other and learning from each other. So pre-K-12 students get to receive one-on-one -on -one attention from my students who go into the classroom. Uh, they get uh, support from those teachers, uh, those teacher candidates, and they can also serve as mentors for those younger students. The pre-K-12 art teachers share their experiences and expertise with my students. Um, and then they're good, they have their good sounding board for ideas. Our students um, get, get hands-on experience working with these teachers with that expertise. Um, so the teachers are benefiting, the pre-K 12 art teachers and students are benefiting, the administrators, which Michelle will talk about, also benefit because they're going to get professional development for their teachers. Um, and that is upcoming on October 23rd, which is a Saturday. We're gonna have a multi-district um, professional development workshop for teachers from the three districts that are now participating. Uh, the school districts, um, Beyond and above the school districts receive financial compensation through their art department. So the Professional Development School Consortium here at Buffalo State provides uh, the art education departments with a stipend. Our teacher candidates, my students, get to observe and implement theories and contemporary art practices in classrooms and real world, world experiences. So they get hands-on, minds-in and hearts-in kind of uh, experiences. It helps me to stay grounded to the practical world. I'm always in schools. I try and work with teachers and students constantly. And then for our program, we have that connection um, where we're, we're sure we're developing future teachers uh, that are ready for the real world. So our future goal is to include communities, uh, community partners, such as the Buffalo Art Studio and other organizations. So we're starting, we started in 2019 when I started here. We began with Buffalo Public Schools. We have Kenton, Williamsville, and our goal now is to reach out to those community partners. So I just wanted to, can I add just one thing? The, um, the PD for administrators, that also includes uh, PD for me. So I was very lucky to be able to sit in with other um, individuals through PDS um, and have conversations with people that are engaged in that um, work with that group with that. And it was really, really special for me. I got to not only meet other people um, who I've never met before, who are like-minded in this idea of offering professional development, but I also learned from everyone. So it was a great experience for me. So we're gonna talk about the pre-pandemic collaborations, um, how we started building community between Buffalo State and Buffalo Public Schools, and then our transition. So in fall 2019, I taught a class, ATM 325 Art for Students with Special Learning Needs, and we went into School 84 and Babcock, 
Um, we took small groups of students in uh, to observe the teachers and interview the teachers, talk with them and work with their students. I also had the Buffalo Public School art teachers come into my classroom to present on various topics related to the course. I taught another course, Art Ed 310, which is art methods and materials. So our art teacher friends from Buffalo Public came in and talked about specific and unique programs, which Michelle can probably talk a little bit more about, um, for our students. So Erin Kaminsky teaches uh, at iPrep and she works in a course uh, on a course called Architecture and Veronica Kruger at South Park and she works with fashion design. So our students don't get to talk about architecture or fashion design much in their studio courses. So this was a big benefit to be able to have these teachers come in. Michelle, did you wanna add anything about their programs? Yeah, we're just really excited. They're really stellar um, teachers. They're expert teachers. They um, off they are, and they're also welcoming teachers, which is wonderful. They they want to share um, their own personal experiences, their their challenges, and their successes. And um, and they've done great work with their programs. We have um, five specialty programs now, um, and Veronica and Erin. Um, actually uh, facilitate the, the most popular and, and the largest ones right now. But we also have some media arts and animation, um, some film, and we started a new one called um, Arts and Justice. Um, and uh, we're, we're looking forward to seeing that at East High School. So not only did um, our students get, in, get to go into Buffalo Public Schools to observe, work with teachers and work with students, and have their teachers come into our classrooms to teach our students here on campus. Uh, but we took it a step further and engaged in a project called Big Inc., which is through the New York State Art Teachers Association. So Michelle Schrader and Veronica Kruger, who are Buffalo Public School teachers and also NYSAR representatives, came in and taught my students how to uh, carve wood carving blocks that they could print. My students went to the New York State Art Teachers Association conference and alongside the Buffalo Public School teachers and other local teachers, even across the state, were able to create a four foot by 10 foot uh, print of all of the things that they did. So we're, we're really creating community in that very first semester uh, that we were working together. In spring 2020, we all know what happened. Uh, before we went uh, to remote learning, Michelle came into our classroom introduced herself and the schools. She just did that again for my students uh, yesterday uh, to get them familiar with what they might expect when they go into the Buffalo Public Schools. So small groups of my students were actually able to go into Buffalo Public Schools and observe and work with the individual students and small groups of students uh, before COVID hit. Then we had to transition. Um, so, uh, we had student teachers who could not finish their placements because of COVID. So we drew upon our PDS partnership and asked the teachers uh, if our, our students could interview them. So they interviewed many teachers across the area, but also across the country. Um, and then those teachers from Buffalo Public Schools uh, actually interviewed our students doing mock interviews to prepare them for the interviews that they would have. Say later. Okay, so my, my students interviewed them. They interviewed my students, so we were working around. My students also created online um, lessons that the teachers could use in their classroom. Um, the te and then in the spring of 2021, teacher candidates became remote observers and assistants. They weren't able to go into the schools. But the teachers really made it happen for my students. So uh, my students were able to virtually observe students in real time uh, and teachers working with them. Uh, they appreciated having the connections to local art teachers. Um, some of my students will share a little bit more. Uh, and then they also worked with students across the country. So they were able to compare what they were learning from their observations in Buffalo public schools with the teachers, with uh, teacher friends that I have across the country. So the art teachers were remote mentors, so they weren't in person, but they were still 
uh, helping our students. They appreciated having someone who saw what they were going through. Uh, they weren't alone. They felt that there was someone else there. Um, and then they ended up, many of them, requesting our student observers who were remote to be their student teachers in the future. So it was a win-win there. Michelle, did you want to add anything? Uh, no, I think it was an unusual experience for everyone. So I think having some sort of, um, again, you used the word sounding board, just uh, another person to talk things through. And to be honest with you, some of your students gave some great insight to our teachers. And so it was a really just a nice collaborative um, event that I don't think would have really normally have happened other than virtually and remote. So. So if you had to look at the positive, I think having, they were building in, uh, different and, and I think probably better relationships virtually than in person for this, you know, at this time. It's, it's, a, it's been very interesting to observe these kinds of uh, sessions. Hmm. You will like technical difficulty. Hold on one second. So we're going to let two of the students kind of share a little bit more about their experiences of remote observations and remote field work. I just want to hold on to the screen real quick. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we are. Track yourself there. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Um, teacher voices. Yeah, teacher voices. Okay. Um, so I think that being able to observe online was a really valuable experience. I mean, ideally, we would be in the classroom and have the opportunity to be more hands on with students. But being online, at least we were still watching teachers in real time. I was able to observe my teacher go through all of the challenges of switching up his routines and his lessons in order to accommodate for teaching on an online platform for all of his students. Um, he was able to speak with me before and after all of his classes. It was kind of hard for me to um, speak with the larger classes of his, like actually speaking with his students, but I was still able to observe how he interacted with all of his students. Um, before and after class, he would speak with me about um, why he was teaching what he was teaching, how he planned his lessons, how he would normally teach his lessons during a normal school year where his students were in class. Um, I had the opportunity to see him change. <laughs> it's just, it's really interesting to me to see how he was able to accommodate all of his lessons to work with materials that the students had at home. Because most students only had pencil and paper. And I know that like some kids went out to some school districts, but the kids didn't hold on to them properly or like stuff gets lost or used up or so a lot of it was pencil and paper or there were a few um, times when he did like online different softwares with the students. And uh, I feel like I learned a lot from him just being able to see um, how he was able to accommodate and see all of that happen in real time. Yeah, so basically going off what Maria said, I think we need to take this as a like, very unique time that not a lot of our teachers got to have. And we kind of saw a very challenging experience for educators that like it can happen. And we saw a lot of these um, moments of risk taking and trials and errors and how to bounce back from that, how to still work with students despite these issues. So being on Zoom and being able to um, interact with my teacher beforehand, like before class and after class, and talking about how the students are doing and still managing to build those connections with students, um, despite like being on a screen, not being able to interact with them in person. I realized that I grew very close with these kids 
more than I thought I would. And by the end of it, I was like, oh my gosh, like it's, you know, I'm not going to see you guys again, but um, we still got to have that. I thought that was really amazing. And I was even able to prepare lesson materials for future lessons that I didn't get to sit in on, but like being able to talk about those things with my teacher and uh, again, like kind of interact with how she's feeling, how she's taking those risks uh, was a very valuable experience. <laughs> so uh, we were talking earlier and they had mentioned how much, how, how much more beneficial it was to be in the classroom rather than just watching videos of teachers because you're able to see it firsthand in the moment and ask those questions before and after. Um, and I loved how both of them were talking earlier about how sad they were when it ended. And we think that those connections were hard to make virtually, but as someone in our main presentation talked about, they were making those connections uh, and how important it is to keep those going. So they were both sad and their students were sad to see them go, which is, is always heartwarming. So uh, that brings us to now. Um, and our art teachers in the Buffalo Public Schools are still making it happen. It's amazing what they do. Um, on the right here, I wrote a short article for the New York State Art Teachers Association newsletter thanking them um, because what they were doing was amazing and what they were going through was so challenging, yet they still worked with our students. So Buffalo Public, yay you for letting us you know, remotely connect. Uh, the teachers were willing to talk with our students after school and before school and on Zoom. Um, they were amazing. So um, mm -hmm. right now they're going to be going into the Buffalo Public Schools to observe and do field work, get that hands-on experience, which they haven't had at all uh, because of the pandemic. So I know they're super excited to be in the classroom, but the remote was, was also beneficial. So these are just a couple of the our teachers from Buffalo Public Schools who have helped us. Um, and again, I can't thank them enough. Uh, and then I'll go to the last slide here and then I'll turn it over to Michelle. Um, there's outcomes beyond the teaching and learning that happened with this partnership. I believe Michelle and I, the teachers and my students and the classroom students, the, the pre-K-12 students really created a sense of community. Um, they cared about us, we cared about them, everybody learned from everyone. Um, so some of the extending or uh, long the classroom outcomes that happened, uh, I was connected with uh, our teacher, Laura Miner, uh, and encouraged her because I was the co-editor of the NYSADA News. So I encouraged Laura Miner to share one of these amazing um, virtual field trips that she had created to the Freedom Wall, which is not far from here. Um, and she wrote a wonderful article in explaining how to do a virtual field trip for your students, regardless of COVID. Sometimes you can't get them to all of the places you want them to see. So uh, she was amazing. I encouraged Rachel Lyons, who is one of our student teaching mentors, to write because she has a passion for culturally and responsive teaching. Um, and she wrote an article called Art is Power, Art Education is Empowering. And her student teacher at the time also wrote an article called A Reflection on Culturally Responsive Teaching. So you can see the benefits that everybody has by working together. Uh, and Clarice Prochel, who is also a Buffalo Public School teacher, has recently wrote an article called Our Inner Observers. And she was talking about social and emotional practices in the art room. So now we have our community of practice with our teachers, our students, their students, administrators, professors, now extending beyond that through these newsletters. So our Buffalo Public School teachers are reaching even more teachers across the state. Michelle and I have also uh, presented with many of the teachers. So Aaron Kaminsky, Cassie Lipsitz uh, presented with us at the NAEA uh, conference. Tracy Rose and Amy Capazello and Michelle Schrader also presented at the National Art Education Association conference with us. And next month, uh, Samantha Laura, another Buffalo Public School teacher, is going to be presenting with us um, on our PDS partnership. So we have PDS and NAPDS presentations as well. So uh, I believe that PDS has offered us an opportunity to truly become a community where everybody is in it for everyone else to, to benefit. So there is no hierarchy. 
Uh, I enjoy coming into the classrooms. I don't ever want someone to see me as an ivory tower professor and PBS has offered that opportunity so that I, I, I'm staying grounded and staying connected um, with the field. So I'll be quiet for a little bit. So Michelle <laughs> Augusto can share some of her thoughts. Yeah, um, you know, what I love about this slide is that it shows, like you said, community. And, and I especially appreciate our vet, more veteran teachers and our newer hires participating in this kind of presentations and work. Because um, that's one thing that I urge our, you know, our teachers in general is everyone has expertise. Everyone has something that they bring to their profession that is special and should be heard. Um, and so presenting it to others, um, I think is really important. And I love seeing uh, Megan, who's your student doing this alongside Rachel, um, but seeing Clarice and Samantha, who are newer teachers, take that role on is really um, important. And um, I'm really proud of that because I think in this, in, in our department, in our department, we, um, we're very clear about uh, our teachers um, being um, people uh, that can empower and offer the power. They have lots of information that could be quite empowering. And I think um, sharing that is, is a source of strength for them. And so I'm really excited that they have taken this on. Um, and it is really because you're right, PDS has helped kind of push this along. And I appreciate that very much. And 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 Dr. Wolf, I want to say no one ever thinks you're on the ivory tower. You're right, you're you're on the ground running. So so don't ever think that. <laughs> hey, I'm smiling. <laughs> I'm smiling right now. Um, so I want to go back and just um, I wasn't sure if people were able to read some of the quotes and see some of the artwork, but these were um, quotes from my students and from the Buffalo Public School art teachers. Um, when they were collaborating together. So this is a work of art that was done when uh, one of our students, Jenna, was working with Michelle Schrader at uh, Kavinsky. And Jenna wrote, after the partnership, um, teacher, she said that she would teach in Buffalo Public Schools. So um, I thought that was pretty good because she was, in general, she, she didn't think about teaching in Buffalo Public Schools, even though she lives in Buffalo, it wasn't on her radar, but because of the remote observations and her connection that she made to her art teacher, um, Lynn, Michelle Schrader at the time, and also Lynn Vicent, um, really moved her. So uh, Lynn has actually agreed to be her mentor teacher for student teaching. So again, we have lots of benefits from, from this collaboration. Um, this is a piece done by a student at Lafayette International. Um, with our teacher Cassie Lipsitz and our teacher candidate Lewis said that Miss Lipsitz went out of her way to fully understand all of her students and even learned how to speak Spanish to ensure she did. So they were really seeing what the teachers were going through. Other students had mentioned how the Buffalo Public School art teachers were taking art supplies to the students' houses or sending them to the, to, to the students' houses so they were really inspiring our, our students, even in difficult times. Um, these are some other pieces that were done. Uh, and this was a work of art done by a student at Graviars with Samantha Laura, who is a newer teacher, a couple years in. And her teacher candidate uh, was Carrie. So um, Samantha said that Carrie was eager to learn, asked lots of questions, and was very professional. She inquired about individual students and their needs, and even provided me with some fresh insight, which was a pleasure, and it was a pleasure to work with her. So if we go back to the slide, works of how this benefits everyone. For the pre-K-12 students missed our students when they were leaving, so they appreciated having another voice, another person in the classroom, another adult to give them support, and even just be there. Um, I believe that the art teachers felt heard and felt like someone was seeing them and all of the hardship that they were going through. Um, they both were able to, to benefit there. The administrators, of course, Michelle and I have been working uh, on, on a professional development 
for a multi-district development workshop so that we're trying to expand that community of practice. Uh, the art teacher candidates, as you heard, uh, you can't be hands-on, but if you can't be hands-on, at least you have eyes on uh, and, and in that real-time moment. Uh, and for me, it was just super meaningful because I feel like the art teachers are my art teacher friends. I talk about this to my students all the time. I have so many art teacher friends. They're not just art teachers, but I've developed relationships with these teachers. And when I call upon them, they are always saying yes. It amazes me how, how often they're willing to let our students do things even during challenging times. So started with Buffalo Public. We're working with Kenton. We started working with Williamsville. Our goal is to get a rural school. So if you know any, let me know. And then we're gonna reach out uh, to the community arts partners to see if we can uh, continue that community of practice. And apparently I spoke way too fast today. I was a little bit nervous in the technology. So that is all I have. But if there are questions, Michelle and I would be happy to answer them. Or if you have one for our students, our students are still here too. Everybody needs a break. Oh, I have a question from the audience. Yes, sir. Um, moving forward, you know, mid post pandemic time, we feel like a lot of the methods using technology, different software that, you know, a lot of educators across the country have utilized during the pandemic. How do you see that moving forward? Because obviously, wasn't an ideal situation, but there's so many tools that we can all use as educators that we learned from the pandemic moving forward. So how do you, how would you say that relates to our education specifically? Some things that you've seen, your students have seen, etc. Well, one one great um, platform that we used was Padlet, where you could put student artwork up and people could comment on their artwork. So I saw a lot of our Buffalo Public School teachers take advantage of that. I used it when we were in remote instruction. But honestly, this morning, I was just talking to my students that I don't think, I think when I moved back to the classroom, I kind of forgot all of those great things I was doing online. So now for me, I need to start marrying the two together. So um, what we learned from the pandemic, what we can take in, kind of, I just kind of closed that door and opened the other door. And now I'm realizing I need to have both doors open. Uh, so Padlet was one, Flipgrid is another. Um, Jamboard, lots of, of, of strategies to engage students, um, which we need to take back now and continue to use, but we have to figure out how to do that. How does that, what does that look like in an in-classroom experience? So Michelle, did you want yeah. to? Yeah, I actually do want to jump in. I think, um, I think you're absolutely right. The technology is really important and shouldn't be forgotten. And I think our teachers are finding ways to integrate that. Um, it forced people, in a, especially people who are not, you know, who are all hands-on and hate technology, it forced them in this bubble of technology being remote. And, um, and I think actually it was beneficial um, for our teachers because they were able suddenly to think kind of out of the box in a different way. Um, we use uh, lots of different platforms in our district. So um, the, the Padlet and things like that, that uh, Dr. Wolf was talking about, we do use, but we actually have very specific um, platforms that we use in a district, something called Schoology um, that we use to um, hold student portfolios, to assess, to have conversations with students. And we use Teams um, to do our, you know, any remote learning and chats. But what they learned is, um, I think the teachers learned how to utilize this and to actually make different kinds of connections with students, students that may be shyer, students that would prefer to write over verbally saying something, um, took advantage of that. Um, and I, I also think, um, you know, using those tools in the classroom are, is going to be very beneficial. Um, you know, using them for visual journals, putting up prompts, putting, you know, starting to use links and, you know, you don't have to put everything on the board you know, kids have access to technology and now they're responsible for it. Now they know how to utilize it because they've had to utilize it. So I think it just gives you a certain amount of flexibility. Um, it's just knowing what the, your district wants to use 
you know, what your students, what's appropriate for your students to use, and then just being consistent with that. But I think, I think Dr. Wolf is right. You, ha you, there has to be a merging of those two worlds. Um, I think it's very beneficial for, for all of our students to be able to kind of go back and forth. And I think teachers are forced to practice that and now have gotten pretty good. So I think they can better balance those two worlds together in the classroom. Any questions, comments? I actually have one for the student. Sorry to put you back on the spot. <laughs> So can you think of one thing that you never would have expected in the, in the virtual world, like doing art virtually? Is there one thing that like you could highlight as is something that you would continue to do? You just thought it was amazing and you would never have thought that possible before. Um, yeah, it'd be easier if the audio if you come up here. I want to make sure Thanks, people can hear. Um, well, I would say, oh wait, yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah, one thing for me, and this is pretty specific, but um, I was talking with another teacher who I was sort of like interviewing with and talking about her lesson plans and ideas, and I believe she was using Canva, it's like an app and like a website application, and she was talking about this art project she was having that was a social uh, justice related and she's gonna have the students make uh like gifs and i was like i like haven't even considered something like that like in my classroom yet now um we're learning about like new media in like our current semester so it's like that's coming more to me but like especially with the online learning like you kind of open up this access to all these new technologies as dr wolf was mentioning so um thinking about lessons that can center around those things that especially are interesting to students um was something that didn't really occur to me uh, prior to COVID. So that was my experience. I don't know if mine's as specific, but there was one like, I can't remember the exact website, but there was a website that the teacher that I was observing used. And um, it was like, he would teach a little bit before each lesson about an artist or a movement or the content part of the lesson. And then after that, at the end, there would always be a game online, which isn't completely new, but it was like, it got the kids so involved in learning the content so that they could rank higher on this game and you could watch them climb up. And I just thought it was really funny because these little kids were like, oh no, I'm losing first place. I must have missed the question. Like mm -hmm. they would really get into it and because it was routine, they were, they were um, expecting it the next time. So they would go through the lesson, really pay attention to the content part of the lesson so that they could answer the questions for this fun little game, which isn't necessarily a new thing, but I thought it was a good incorporation into the online thing. And it really did get the kids excited and engaged in that part of the lesson. I know we have a couple other students on Zoom and in the, in the classroom, so if they want to say anything, please feel free. But um, one quote or motto for one of my courses is make it happen and make it better. So my nerves have finally settled down now that's the end of the presentation. I made it happen. Now I'm going to make it better so I don't have that nervous tone in me. Um, but <laughs> the teachers and Michelle and the students all made it happen. No, nobody complained. Nobody grumbled that it had to be remote. Everybody was gracious, grateful, and worked together as a team. And I really couldn't have asked for anything more from our community of practice. So um, is there anything else anybody would like to add or? I was just going to say, I don't think I said it before, but I was super grateful for the opportunity that we did have because the semester after I did do like Atlas, the videos for observations instead, and you can only, you learn a lot, but you can only get so far with them. You, you don't have the resource of the actual teacher to plan the lesson. They have commentary, but then you have a specific question, and they're kind of like rounded in a specific way for that website or whatever the submissions were that we were watching. Um, and it's not as real for me as the teacher and then being able to ask specific questions that would help us in the future. So I was grateful and I think it was a great opportunity. Yeah, um, going off what you said, like I um, 
was appreciated that I can see the child um, welcome these teachers have been for all of us and how they're so willing to despite like even now it's still an adjustment. We're in person, but like all center, this is like the post after half of it. So we're all, you know, busy, but like, there I can even imagine if this guy's were liking that they are so welcoming and open to us and uh Zoom they were the most one. Um, we still got a good experience despite um, what we had going on. So. Uh, can I say something? Absolutely. I, I, yeah, I just want to say that, you know, you know, you know, sometimes words are empty, you know, when you talk about building community. And um, I am very grateful for Dr. Wolf. Um, it's hard to find people who believe and are passionate about the same kinds of things. And so Dr. Wolf and I definitely are aligned in our belief that it takes everyone to um, make this work, especially if you care about arts education, you know, and, and how it affects our young people. And so, um, so I love working with her because, you know, we're always figuring out ways to get everyone involved in something that we think is highly purposeful. Um, so uh, I just wanted to kind of say that out loud. And um, I'm looking forward to the next part of this um, cycle of adding the community arts organizations because I think that will definitely complete, well, nothing is ever complete. Everything is being worked on, but it'll definitely add, it'll, it'll give it a robustness that I think will just elevate the whole experience for everyone. Well, the speaker today talked about, just one of the speakers, there's been a lot, talked about education being an act of love. And I hope you can feel the love because this is an endeavor of love for each other, for our students, for the arts um, and for education. So thank you everyone for coming. I guess you get an extra five minute coffee break. <laughs> and, uh...